Uh, so the problem was about the re- supposed relationship between hair color and pain tolerance. So apparently, it seems that there is literature suggesting that individuals who have have lesser pigmentation, have lighter hair color, such as blondes, seem to, to have more pain tolerance compared to those who have darker hair tones or darker hair color, such as brunettes. And so a group of scientists uh, set out to investigate whether or not there are significant variation in the pain tolerance across four groups of individuals with different hair colors. And those are um, individuals who are light blondes, dark blondes, light brunettes, and dark brunettes. So our dependent variable is hair color which is categorical. There are four categories, the different hair colors that I've mentioned a while ago. And our dependent variable is pain threshold or pain tolerance, which was measured as a continuous variable. So apparently they made use of a scale to measure pain tolerance. And uh, the higher the score of the individuals in this particular scale, the higher their pain tolerance as well. Um, And given such... Uh, Also, given that the four groups that we made mention a while ago are four separate groups, matching was was not done. It wasn't mentioned in the problem. So they are four separate groups. So we will do or we run... We ran a one-way analysis or between subjects one-way analysis of variance. And we have the output here. This is the output. We can see that the p-value is significant, which suggests that there are significant differences. Differences among what? Differences among these means. Um, So the ANOVA is telling us that somewhere uh, among these means, at least one of them is significantly different from uh, the other means. And in order to identify which of the means are actually different from one another, we we ran... um, series of post hoc tests, particularly Tuki. And after doing so, um, and this is also supported by the plots when we check the plots, um, because among or between these specific groups, there are no overlapping of confidence intervals. Our Tuki suggests that there is specifically a difference in pain tolerance between dark brunettes and light blondes. Uh, with a p-value of 0.004. So that is the first comparison that identifies a significant difference. In particular, we find that light blondes, who have a mean of 59.2, um, have higher pain threshold compared to, uh, what was the comparison with dark brunettes? Dark brunettes only had a pain toler- an average pain tolerance of 37.4. Likewise, we also find significant difference between light blondes and light brunettes with a p-value of 0.037. So light blondes and light brunettes. So we, uh, that is a comparison between 59.2 uh, for uh, the pain tolerance of light blondes and light brunettes, 42.5. Otherwise, we don't see any other significant difference. And so I asked uh, you to write a simple report covering the following, uh, the following areas. So one, a reminder of what the objective of the study is, the alternative hypothesis, preferably a directional one, although I'm not sure if we can be very specific in this case considering that we have limited information with regard to the problem, the exact statistical analysis used. Yes, it is ANOVA, but what specific kind of ANOVA are we going to use? The result of the inferential statistic, which is the ANOVA. And specifically, uh, you were instructed not yet to talk about the descriptives, which are the mean and standard deviation. Also, the effect size. So we, were, we ran an eta squared uh, and we found out that the eta squared is 0.576, which we can interpret better if we convert this into percentage, uh, which is 57.6% variance explained by the independent variable. And then we talk about the post hoc used. Um, specifically, we use the default, which is Tuki 
and then and then the result of the post hoc so the honestly significant difference uh, together with the descriptives so it's already appropriate now to talk about the descriptives because we are already talking about specific pairwise comparison among means and finally a short statement that can be understood by somebody who doesn't know statistics that summarizes the results um, so the first one is the objective of the study when I do this I like to break it down part by part so that I can clearly see the components, the basic components. And then later on, we'll just sort of merge them again. So we have here the objective, the hypothesis, the statistical analysis used, the result of the inferential statistics without descriptives, the effect size, the result of the so at the post hoc, the post hoc used, the result of the post hoc together with some descriptives and of course some p-values pertaining to pairwise comparisons and finally the meaning of the findings all right so let's begin so let me just read to you and i will verbalize what i think about and will try to uh, improve the write-up the objective of the study is to determine whether there is a significant difference in pain tolerance based on hair color and hue of individuals okay one because we are comparing not only if we're comparing two means then it would be appropriate to say significant difference but since we are comparing multiple means in this case we're comparing four so i'll slightly change this to the objective of the study is to determine whether there are significant differences pain tolerance among individuals with different hair color all right so uh, as it is this is already good but if you want to be more clear uh, you can also include some specification about what the different hair colors are because there could be a number of hair colors. So maybe uh, just as an addition, you can say specifically, or maybe we can separate this with a semicolon, specifically light blondes, dark blondes, and dark brunettes. All right. So again, this is just a little, a little something extra. Um, just for clarification purposes. Otherwise, the first statement is already sufficient. Uh, but yeah, we just want to specify. Um, when you write a report, always think about the reader. Uh, so if we stop here, my thought process was, is this already enough? Or will the reader get confused or think about other hair colors that are not really part of the study? Because there are many possible hair colors other than the four conditions that we have here. So do I need to specify it so that it's clear to the reader? And my thought process was, I think, I think it is. No. And that's why I included here. Next, it was previously hypothesized that blondes have higher pain tolerance than brunettes. Okay. And this was really mentioned in the problem. The only issue I have here is that it sounds as though that Yes, you are recounting what was previously hypothesized. But, now when you say previously, do you mean to say a while ago in the, in the earlier part of my manuscript? Or when you say previously, do you mean to say based on previous literature? It's not clear. And I'm guessing that when you say previously, or you know, when you say previously, readers will think more about previous literature. And that is not our hypothesis per se. Those are the hypotheses of the previous literature. We're now writing a current literature. So you can simply say it was hypothesized uh, instead of uh, you know, further qualifying it as previously hypothesized, which can be misconstrued as hypothesis of uh, the previous literature. Uh, it was hypothesized that blondes have higher pain tolerance than brunettes. Okay, so this is okay, but if, if I want to account for the more specific variation in hair color, I can throw in something generic for the meantime. 
I can say it was hypothesized that individuals with lighter hair color are more likely to have higher pain to rats. I guess this, this can be a compromise. I'm not limiting the variation of hair color to blondes and brunettes only because within blondes, we have more specific types of blondes and more specific like brunettes. And at the same time, I'm also, I'm just hypothesizing some kind of general pattern that we should expect uh, without specifying that light blondes will be significantly um, higher in pain tolerance compared to dark brunettes or dark blondes or uh, light brunettes, so forth and so on. I, I guess this is okay for the meantime. Okay, next. What is the analysis used? Uh, between subjects, one-way ANOVA was used to analyze the data collected. All right, so that is specific. Uh, our volunteer student uh, specified that it's between subjects. It is one way. That's good. The results show. Now, when it's ANOVA, I guess that's just one result. So the result shows, uh, because you're only pertaining to the ANOVA result. The result shows that there is a significant difference in pain tolerance across different hair colors. And same thing to make it parallel with uh, the changes that we employed here. We're going to say the results show that there is a there are there are significant differences in the pain tolerance across different hair colors. Now when you say across different hair colors, you you, you sort of attribute pain tolerance to the hair color itself, but the pain tolerance is actually a characteristic of the individual. So maybe we should specify that. Significant differences in the pain tolerance across participants with different hair colors. Okay, now this particular expression, when you already have a parenthesis here, you cannot have a parenthesis outside of it. No? So it's either you make this a, a bracket of sort. My suggestion is instead of putting it in a parenthesis, just put a comma and that works um, just as just just as fine. So it's good uh, the uh, the F notation is italicized as well as the P. Uh, let's double check. So F uh, three and fifteen. So these are your two degrees of freedom. Let's double check our degrees of freedom. Is it three and fifteen? So yes, the F ratio is 6.79. Yes. The P value is 0 0.004. Now when you when you write the value either in tables or in the write up, like for example, eto, try to remove the zero before the decimal place. Like so, and we no longer put the the zero, especially in the report. So 0 0.004. So this is good. Next, the effect size is 57.6%. Uh, the, yes, the value is good. She has converted the partial eta squared of 0.567 into percentage. But you can sort of uh, be more specific now uh, when it comes to the effect size. Uh, we said that the eta squared is a measure of variance explained. So maybe we can um, write it up as such. So you can say that the variation hair color, uh, and what, the, what are those variation? Light blonde, dark blonde, light brunette, dark brunette. The variation in hair color accounted for 57.6% of the variation in, what is our dependent variable? Pain tolerance. All right. So th that would be a fuller way of, of saying it no, in, instead of just saying that the effect size is 57.6. Um, so it better communicates to the reader um, what that 57.6 means. Okay. Next, Tukis HSD was used for post hoc analysis. Right, that's sufficient. Now, this is the, the, the tricky part. It's tricky because, as you can see, we have several comparisons. We have six comparisons. We can present them 
one by one, but that would be a very long report. If we will write, uh, let's say, for example, one sentence for each of these comparisons, that wouldn't be wise. So as a rule of thumb, when you are discussing post-hoc, one, try to find a way to simplify the overall picture. So don't go by comparison by comparison. Second, take a look at the, the overall finding and see a pattern. Like find a story. So there should be a story. What is the story here? For example, one particular story that you can um, see here is that dark blondes and light blondes, dark brunettes and light brunettes, they don't differ in pain tolerance. So within blondes and brunette, uh, within blondes no, and within brunettes, they roughly have the same level of pain tolerance, regardless if you are you know, dark blonde or light blonde. Another storyline here is that dark blondes do not significantly differ with light brunettes and dark brunettes. So not significant, not significant. So previous literature suggests that blondes have you know, significant higher in pain tolerance compared to brunettes. But it seems that when we say blondes, we're not specific. Um, that doesn't seem to apply with blondes with a darker hue, at least you know, for our current sample. And that seems to be more specific are uh, the findings from previous literature which says that blondes have higher pain threshold compared to uh, brunettes that seems to be more true specifically for light blondes uh, and we can see that light blondes differ in pain tolerance compared to dark brunettes that's that's the result and light blondes as well significantly differ in or have significantly higher pain tolerance compared to light brunettes and that's our result so the overall picture seems that one, light blondes, it, it is the light blondes who have significantly higher pain tolerance compared to brunettes regardless if, if they're light brunette or dark brunette. And that dark blondes, they're practically the same in pain tolerance compared to light brunettes and dark brunettes. And that within brunettes and blondes, no, there are no variations, statistical variation in their pain tolerance level. So let's see how our volunteer student did it. Um, the results state that light blondes have significantly higher pain tolerance than dark brunettes and light brunettes. So she went first with the significant difference, okay? So her first narrative is that light blondes have higher pain tolerance than dark brunettes and light brunettes. Okay, so that's her first storyline. There is no significant difference between light blondes and dark blondes. Dark blondes also have no significant variation from dark brunettes and light brunettes. Between dark and light brunettes, there's also no significant variation. Okay, so... I think the better arrangement is that the comparison be within blondes, dark and light, and brunettes, light, uh, dark and light. So I think this should have been better here. Now, what about this? Dark blondes do not vary uh, or do not differ in pain tolerance. I think this is, this is an ideal contrast to the finding we had with regard to light blondes. Now, given that light blondes have higher significant um, have higher pain tolerance than dark and light brunettes, but we don't find that, that same finding among dark blondes, I think this is better juxtaposed here. And, and then this seems to be the more trivial result, so maybe we should state it last. So let's begin with our uh, key finding first. Okay, so result results state that yes results is appropriate now because we have multi postdoc results now when you say state state is a verb it sounds very agentic it sounds very active as though the result the results are speaking for themselves so maybe a more passive kind of verb which is reveal results reveal that light blondes our, our student volunteer had it right so we put the descriptive specifically mean and standard deviation right beside the category. My suggestion, however, is to eliminate the spaces. It's also very good that she italicized the notations. HSD is also a notation, so italicize that 
as well. Have significantly higher pain tolerance than dark brunettes. What the student did was the p-value was within this parenthesis. My recommendation is just put it outside. Normally, p-values are found at the end of the sentence. Maybe I can put it here instead. Let me first fix this. This shouldn't be italicized. Okay, so, so this is what I would do. So result reve results reveal that light blondes, and then their descriptives, with an average of 59.2, have significantly higher pain tolerance than dark brunettes. I'd like to point out one good thing that the uh, volunteer student do. She specified the term significant, which is very important, than brunettes. And then as an evidence of the significance, she uh, included the p-value, but what I did instead is put the p-value outside of the parenthesis and just put them side by side and just say respectively. So when I say respectively, that means to say that this p-value is for the first comparison, which is light blondes versus dark, dark brunettes. And um, 0 0.037 is for the second comparison, which is light blondes versus light brunettes. So there are a variety of ways of doing this. So you can do this. You can also say P's as in multiple uh, P values. I, I, I've seen something like this. And then say something general or applicable to both of these P values. One thing common among them is that both of them are less than 0 0.05. So if I say P's are less than 0 0.05, this would be the same as this one as well, okay? Because both of them are less than 0 0.05. So I can also say P's are less than 0 0.05. But I'm not, so that's just one alternative, but let's go with this style. P equals 0 0.004, comma 0 0.0037, respective. Next, let's deal with this, okay. Now, because I changed the position and because we are already saying this statement in contrast with this, so we found that light blondes have higher pain tolerance and therefore we should say or we should transition by saying however, however, dark blondes do not significantly differ in pain tolerance compared to dark brunettes and light brunettes. All right, so th these p-values, they, they can be in a parenthesis. So let's just remove the zeros here. Okay. However, dark blondes do not significantly different, differ in pain tolerance compared to dark brunettes and light brunettes. We've already mentioned the descriptive of light blondes. So we don't have to repeat. Uh, what about uh, dark brunettes? Oh, light blondes. But we haven't mentioned the, uh, fr from at least no, from here, we haven't mentioned the descriptives of dark blondes. So we need to do that. And it's here already. Okay, so let's just copy that. Dark blondes, let's transfer it here. And then the last one. So this one is sort of just the, the more trivial finding. And because we found no difference here, and we also found no difference here, then we can also transition, uh, wait, then we can transition by saying likewise. Likewise, there is no significant difference between, let's remove this, because we already said that in the prior, uh, in the sentence prior between light blondes and dark blondes as well as dark blondes and light brunettes. P equals 0.7798. Likewise, there is no significant difference found between light blondes and dark brunettes. I could have said there is no significant difference in the pain tolerance. Kaya lang, I've already mentioned pain tolerance several times already. So I guess by the time the reader gets to this part, the reader already knows that I'm, we're talking about pain tolerance. So to avoid redundancy, let's just sort of shorten that sentence as so. And then finally, what does all of these findings mean? Therefore, it can be concluded that light... Okay, yes. Uh, so 
um, the, the volunteer student is essentially following the instruction. Let's just try to improve this um, by saying the findings suggest that individuals with minimal pigmentation of hair, which is being light blondes, particularly light blondes, are more likely to, ha to, to be able to withstand pink compared to people who have darker pigmentation such as brunettes. Moreover, people, have, people who have uh, hair colors that are similar in tone, and then maybe to specify um, uh, EG. EG means, um, ex for example, EG, light and dark blondes, blondes, semicolon, light and light and dark brunettes are likely to have the same pain tolerance level. So let us now merge these sentences into a paragraph. So let's beautify this paragraph. So Times New Roman, double space. All right. Let's read one more time. The objective of the study is to determine whether there are significant differences in the average pain tolerance among individuals with different hair color, specifically light blondes, dark blondes, light brunettes, and dark brunettes. It was, it was hypothesized that individuals with lighter hair color are more likely to have higher pain tolerance. A between subjects, one way ANOVA was used to analyze the collected data. The result shows that there are significant differences in pain tolerance across different participants, or cross participants with different hair color. Um, F uh, 3 and 15 uh, equals 6.79, so forth and so on. The variation in the hair color accounted for 57.6% of the variation in pain tolerance. Tukis HSD was used for the post hoc analysis. The results reveal that light blondes have significantly higher pain tolerance than dark brunettes and light brunettes. Resp uh, with, with p-values of 0 0.004 and 0 0.037 respectively. However, dark blondes do not significantly differ in pain to tolerance compared to dark and light brunettes. Okay. Likewise, there are no significant difference found between um, light blondes and dark blondes as well as light and dark brunettes. The findings suggest that individuals with minimal pigmentation of the hair, particularly light blondes, are more likely to be able to withstand pain, uh, pain compared to people who have darker hair pigmentation, such as brunettes. Moreover, people who have hair colors uh, that are similar in tone, um, for example, light uh, and dark blondes, light and dark brunettes, are likely to have the same level of pain tolerance. All right, so that sounds that sounds good enough.